Lily Johnson. This is what he says. For the three of you, talking about James Johnson, if the three of you would like to come to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and put it to the test, come on. And, yes, you can get a black belt at that age because Zach said eight-year-olds can get black belts. So he was low-key dissing him in your fake schools. I'm not 6'9", and don't weigh 50. Since none of you know anything about us, please come see us in Cavs. We don't lie. We'll fly out to Cheyenne to fight uh, James Johnson if he wanted to box you at the gym. If I'll go around with him if you pay me 50K to get beat up by a 6'9", 250. He's about a foot taller than me. I'll do it. Then he would have record online of him fighting. We'll fight JJ, though, if you want to fly us out to Cheyoming. <laughs> Jeff said he's down. Shots taken. Game is on the line. Got the crowd shaking. Los Angeles Lakers never forsaken. Smoking All right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Shots Taken. My name is David. I'm back here with Jeffrey and Zach. Before we get started, I want to say a huge thanks to Big Man Candles for sending us some candles this week. If you guys want to check out their website, I'll pull it up right here. As you guys can see, they have different options and they also have gift sets. Big Man Candle Company. <clears throat> yep, so you guys can go ahead and support them. I'll leave a link in the description. You know, it's the owner is Corey Stanfield. He's a so we're trying to help out the support black owned businesses. All right. And also when you guys make a purchase, each purchase We'll go to Operation Underground Railroad, a nonprofit organization working very hard to combat sex trafficking with a special focus on children. So my man's doing a good thing out there. Love so that. if you guys want to go ahead and check them out, once again, Big Man Candle. Thank you again. All right, you guys. Thank you guys for coming back. A lot to catch up on. We haven't filmed in like two weeks. Um, but before we get started, of course. Cheers. We must have cheers. There you go. Cheers, my friend. Oh, cheers, cheers. Oh, smells like <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess the big news, it's kind of old now because they already started playing, but James Harden has been traded to the Brooklyn Nets, joining Kyrie and yes, Kevin sir. Durant. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Jeffrey, I'll start with you. What was your first thoughts when you heard that? <laughs> The trade went uh, immediately. I thought of LeBron James. I don't know why. I just <laughs> I just thought about the reaction he must have had. Um, there's actually a funny clip of these guys that are like pretty funny com comedians. I don't know what their names are. You know what I'm talking about? Nah, oh, and they made a uh, whole um, uh, Supreme Dreams. Uh, R R C D C. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah, dude made a funny video. You guys should check He's it like, out. I'm 36. Yeah, yeah that I'm was 36. I love those guys. I've, I've been following. Them yeah, for years. Years. LeBron shared it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so that's what I thought of, but. Ultimately, um, I believed it before. I, I still believe it now. Uh, the Nets are winning the East. Right. Uh, I'm not. A f I, I don't think they needed to make that trade. Uh, I'm Same gonna. Here. I'm gonna stand by that. I said that uh, our last pod that I was here. Um, but but we'll see what happens. I mean, Kyrie came back. They lost. Um, they went double OT against Colin Sexton's Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens, but I th I think they'll make it work. I don't think the the trade was necessary, but yeah, that's where I'm at. I push for the for the Nets to keep Kyrie and KD and Karis LeVert. What I was tripping out about that trade is that they were able to keep Spencer Dinwiddie still and Joe Harris because I have the trade pulled up right here. Um, so it says right here they traded Jared Allen, Terry and Prince to Cleveland, and Karis LeVert, and then uh, like uh. Three first round draft picks and four pa uh, pick swaps uh, to Houston. So it was a three way trade. It was between yeah. Cleveland, the yeah. Nets, and the Rockets. So the Rockets, I, I guess they did good because they got the picks that they want. Uh, it's because that's what it is. Yeah. The picks are are gold right yeah. now in the NBA. NBA. Yeah. So it's worth a lot. And um, I mean, they 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 continued making trades. Right. They traded with Indiana. Right. For um, Oladipo, right? He got where did he get sent to? to uh, Wait, who? Oladipo? Oh, to the Rockets. To the yeah, Rockets. Houston. Okay. Yeah, he's so in they Houston. did another trade. It was um, Karis Levert and Karis. Was it the Karis Levert was the yeah the to piece? The Indiana? But then you know uh, he's out with yeah. He they something. found they found a mass somewhere. Yeah. I think his leg or something like that. It was his kidney, which is something. scary. Yeah. Um, you know I don't know what that is, but he's probably going to be out. So that was kind of I mean sad to say, but a smart trade. Um. And then they sent um, Jared Allen to Cleveland, Cleveland. right? Mm, yeah. But that was from, locked in with yeah. centers now. 
Yeah, which is interesting. I think I think they're gonna make a trade moving hurts forward. Drummond yeah. stock for sure. That yeah. hurts Drummond stock, but hurts Drummond I think stock. Brooklyn definitely needed that trade though. That oh, bringing really? Harden through. Fuck yeah! Come on, y'all are talking <laughs> crazy, saying like some other shit. I'm not saying it's a bad trade. I'm just saying it wasn't necessary. It was necessary. But I'll even yeah, it was. Nah, it wasn't necessary. That, I I believe they were winning the East no matter what. I feel like that's their same only here. shot. I'm the no, I'm. T- I'm gonna have to. I might have to go take my cash for the second year in a row and bet on the Heat again because there's gonna be a big underdog to win the East. They're not even like in the playoff. Right I don't even. Now. I know. Oh, well, I guess because Butler's been out, but uh, there's a lot of I injuries mean, over there. Unless they, they can, make a trade for Bradley Beal, which is another conversation we can have later. Yeah, but yeah. if that were to happen, maybe I don't think, I think that's like a. Pl- I think the Heat are like plus seven hundred right now to uh, win the East. I just think I need that. I will say this: I think uh, Harden and KD together. Mm-hmm. Played great Yes The chemistry was there It was literally like Old school OKC Just that James Harden was Is just a million times better but The thing is that When I saw them two play together I was like It's not much different From Kyrie and That's KD what I'm saying together, Yeah though. and and I mean I know they just played Cleveland Kyrie went off for like 37 KD went off James Harden had like 20 something and, and that's great But they lost the game They, they went to the double OT And it's against the Cavs Which I mean I know they got Colin Sexton But I mean, it's the Cavs. I don't know. What, you know? Yeah, but what, fuck, what? It was like on a Wednesday night or some shit. I, I, don't, believe I don't believe in their bench. I don't believe in their bench. Yeah, they played like fifty minutes. And each. I'm not. And and they they're gonna go up against the Lakers, I believe. And I'm not. I'm scared. I'm not. I wouldn't say scared. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm gonna respect their talent, but I'm not scared. Right. Like like I'm just not. I'm know? not scared. I think Lakers can take them. I think we'll match up well only because the Brooklyn Nets. Yes, they have James Harden, Kyrie, and KD. But they got no one for eighty. They got no one for AD. Oh, DeAndre, I think, will do an okay job, but nah. no one for AD. Nah. And they, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, I, I read the stat that they were the, one of the worst offensive teams in the leagues, and they, they how much did they put up, like 140? Mm. Like I mean, Colin Sexton stop. going off, though. Yeah, Dude, Colin I Sexton don't take too much into that. Though. I think that's like, you don't I, don't so? t- I don't put too much into it, man. Against no Cleveland defense. on a Wednesday. Oh, yeah, that's true, though, but, like, I get this Cleveland matchup, I'm like, whatever. Like, it's one game out of, I like, don't know. I don't many? believe that, bro, because I think... If if you're coming into the team and you know this is your first game, you you hear the hype about how oh it's all three of them now. Let's see what happens. And you lose. I think that matters. I think yeah. to Kyrie at least he's like, damn, like we got to win this game. That's why they went hard. That's why they went to double OT. Right. I would think that if they don't care, like it's they're not, not gonna, that they don't care, but they're just not gonna fucking like pour. Every, I don't think they're gonna pour everything that. into it on a Wednesday night. I think night. they're getting paid like, they're millions gonna hold of dollars. Back. They go hard every night, bro. Uh, I think, yeah, I think they go hard, especially like Katie. I don't think an basketball. NBA player comes up and says like, I mean, I, I understand there's special situations, but in this situation where they're like, nah, yeah, I, I, I'm not. I, I don't think wanna, they knew you know? it's their first time playing all together. They want to win. Right. They all want to put up their numbers. They went to double OT, bro. That's all that 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 tells me that they yeah. care, you know. But I don't know. I we'll think, see. I think Brooklyn would have been better off. I think we. I think at least me and you can agree that Brooklyn was going to win the East regardless. I don't think Brooklyn needs all three players. They don't. They don't need all three players. They do and they need, need all three. No, I don't think they need all three. I think now I'm on that train about trading Kyrie. Like, I really Oh, have. really? Yes. I'm actually, well, I can I'm get on that, that train. too. That I can get with you, too, but they obviously they needed a, a star, you know, just. I'm a, on that train, star. bro. Like, let me yeah. tell you. With the That's a hot take, by the way. What I'm on that train. <laughs> Kyrie, I respect his game, but. Like, you know, obviously there are other things more important to him, and that's I respect that. But it's not flat. Whatever. It's not (laughs) basketball. And at the end of the day, like, you don't need all three of them. I I like the way James and and KD played the first game. Right. That was like a a, a beautiful game, like just effortless. If you're telling me I can trade Kyrie and get like maybe two all star type level, not superstar, but all star level, like, I'd do that. If I could build my bench, get rid of. You know, I, I don't think we need Kyrie. Imagine all you right. get Beal. No, look, that would this be a is good this is where I, I'll yeah. argue against that. First of all, I think the Brooklyn Nets would need to confirm with KD, like, yo, like, are you okay with us trading Kyrie? But see, here's the, here's think, the issue with that that I have. That. Wasn't this all set up by Kyrie? Yes. Isn't Kyrie the reason this all got together? I know, but how would that look like saying, like, yo, like, like if I tell you, like, yo, Jeff, I'm going to give you, like, a million dollars, and then also you can bring your friend to work here, and he'll get paid a million dollars. I mean, that's, and then I'm like, no, nah, actually, mean, I want to fire your friend. How would you feel? It's basketball, bro. There's no loyalty. In yeah, basketball. yeah, but the, okay, but the my other chemistry argument, will be all fucked up. Though, yes, at that point, yes, probably, because like, I mean, I guess it ownership. would be the new Boston, right? And then my second point is, who the fuck would trade for Kyrie right now? 
Nobody. Yeah, you're Nobody right. I'm not saying Kyrie. they can trade Kyrie. I, I mean, well, listen, of course, I, Washington would. Here's a no. Th- here's, yeah, but they're uh, giving up. I don't think so. I don't think. With, I don't think with that Westbrook, Westbrook trade, they're happy. Yeah, yeah, I don't think no. they're happy with that Westbrook. Look, this is what I will say. I will say that for Beal, Kyrie won't. Right. I don't think it's immediate. It's not something uh, that happens. That needs to happen now. But I guarantee you, they lose. Mm-hmm. Whether it's in the playoffs, whether it's against us, whether right. it's in the conference finals, they will consider it. I guarantee you, that is what's going to happen. I agree that they will consider. They it. They have no just, assets. What is the 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 if you had those three players, you're going to trade Kyrie first. You're not going to trade KD or James Harden. Right. That's true, but... They must win. Say, it's a must-win year. I think. Well, I think it's a must-win as long as they have them on all three on that team. But they will. I don't think... I think they'll consider trading him. I think, obviously, they'll hear offers, like, if they'll get a chance to get, like, a Bradley Beal, like he said, Bradley Beal. But another team won't want to carry Kyrie, like, the baggage that comes with Kyrie. I mean, there will always be a team willing to make that move. Unless they're willing to throw in picks with, like, I wouldn't trade for Kyrie. Like, say, for instance, let's just say Zach Levine. It's just hypothetical. Like, hey, we'll give you Kyrie for Zach Levine, and we'll throw in a pick. Like, I don't think, te- well, maybe teams will do it because they're dumb. Like, all right, we'll get Kyrie. I think, I think every year there's a player where people say that's an untradeable contract. Like, Re- Westbrook was an untradeable contract. And Chris Paul, too, yeah. And Chris uh, Paul, and they got traded. But I I'll think it'll say, happen I if think they wanted Kyrie's to. Kyrie's in the position. like, if I'm not going to go to a contender, I think, like Stephen A said, like, he'll probably retire. And then what's the point of trading for Kyrie? Especially if his mind is not completely on basketball. I mean, I guess so. I mean, I, that's I, my it, thing. It's a toss up. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens. But I, I think it was not necessary. And I think moving forward, if Brooklyn does not do anything this year, uh-huh. they'll start being a lot of rumors, a lot of consideration about Kyrie. Because I, I think KD and Harden fit well. Right. And they've played before. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, they, yeah, they look good together. Like it was they look easy. great it was together. Easy. And if you like, this reminds me of kind of like, I think like what they need to do is be the Clippers of last year, where they have two star players and. Mm-hmm. I mean, KD and Harden are way better than Paul George and Kyrie. I mean, Ka- Kawhi. Uh, Ka- Kawhi, sorry. Yeah. I mean, Kawhi's just as good, but Paul George is not comparable to KD or, or, okay. or Harden. Yeah. Okay. But you do that, and then you have a solid bench. Like, if you give uh, Harden and KD what Clippers had last year with that solid bench. Right, like Lou Will. Dude, Travis. like, that's scary. That yeah. scares me. Right. That would, yeah, I agree with yeah. that. The only thing is, I don't. I think Kyrie's in the situation like Brooklyn. I guess it's he more. Grew up poli- I feel like what you're trying to say is it's more political than it is basketball. Yes, it's more political. Like basketball reasons, like you can see why. Like strictly basketball, like analytics and everything, you'd be like, all right, we could like we could get away with trading yeah. Kyrie for like bench yeah. players. Yeah. But like the political side is that you know Kyrie's committed to Brooklyn. He's the right. reason why you got KD to Brooklyn. Like you, you I feel guess. like you owe him. Like all right, we'll let this season play out. Hopefully you win us a championship. I'll or give not. look. I'll give them a season. I'll give them a season. Sure. Right. Let's see yeah, what happens. I feel like that's the thing. If they don't make it to the finals, you need to do something different. Oh my god, it's gonna be a circus show if they don't make it to I the finals. It's gonna be just like it's gonna be like it's gonna be like the Clippers. It's gonna be like yes. the Clippers no, last year. Oh no, yes. it, that wasn't worse. that big. Yeah, okay, it'll be it'd be worse. worse. It'd be yeah. much. Oh, okay, worse. Right, much right. Maybe much worse, but just as bad as the Clippers. So Brooklyn, the Heat better is going to take them out. Watch, watch now. <laughs> I'm saying I got it now. Celtics going to the finals. I like so. Boston too. Jalen Brown's going off this year. Yeah, I like Boston. I but we'll see. That fantasy piece. When I, I want to see Lakers up. Boston. When I picked, I, I need see. to see that. See, I'm, I need I'm to throwing, see. That. I've been throwing that narrative since last summer. I don't I think we're ready. I think Brooklyn will get there, but I'd love to see Boston Lakers. Yeah. We're not right. They don't have the stars yet to match up with Bron. If Kyrie was still there, then it would be an LA Boston. Remember when Kyrie was in Boston? And I yeah. believe, I think yeah, if, was, did, if he was healthy, was nice if he was healthy, him and Gordon Hayward were healthy. I think they could have made a push. But the thing, the only bad thing with the Celtics is that they're in a good position, but at the same time, as like they're always like a piece away. Like it seems like that, yeah, yeah, because like Gordon Hayward got hurt, Kyrie got hurt. Here's and then, the thing with Boston that I actually um, hurt. In the Bill Simmons podcast, who's a big Boston fan, Bill Simmons. Oh, yeah, I think he's from Boston. He right? said, yeah. he's like, yeah. dude, like the, the problem with Boston is that they have created this narrative about we don't really back our players up because they're willing to trade anybody, anybody and that's a problem. Mm-hmm. We're Laker fans here, right? Right. We know at the very minimum that Your Laker organization to loves to take care of their players. Mm-hmm. Even after Kobe, you know, rest in peace, uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope, a uh, Pope taken care of. Hey, but look right? that that contract he got, I think he deserved. No, he deserved his last yeah, one, but yeah. the two contracts before that, I yeah, mean, you'd yeah. you'd argue it. Yeah, taken care of, 
right? And and they always talk about how they want to take care of their players. So with Boston, they have a problem there. I think I would be Isaiah scared Thomas, to be playing for Boston. The Isaiah, the Isaiah Thomas situation is what like really like yeah. went into light. Even before that, the the, the Ray, KG, Ray Allen yep, KG. You know, like they wanted to leave. They, they, yeah. I've heard about Jalen Brown yeah. and Jason Tatum in past rumors for AD. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, bro, there's no loyalty there. So yeah. Boston needs to be careful because that narrative is already out there. Yeah, and even like, say for instance, like the Spurs, like even like they'll take care of their players and they're winning championships. Like Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, Ginobili. They take care of them. And that matters, bro. Yep. That matters. Because the Lakers did it for seven years where they went through there's just atrocious, like an atrocious period of time. Right. But they stayed loyal and it worked out for them. We got the twenty twenty chip. So be careful. Be careful. I'll say this though about Brooklyn and LA. Um, the narrative's still there with Kyrie as far as Braun being his father and shit still. <laughs> so uh we'll I would, have I that mean, don't get me wrong. We'll I, have think, that advantage. I think we're in a treat this finals. I think we're in for a, a, a nice treat. Whether it's Brooklyn or whether it's Boston, I think it'll be one of them too. This is why I wish fans were right, like able to. Yeah, play the game. I, yeah, uh, dude, like it's gonna be so historic. Like, yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't. Get, I mean, what? Well, I don't know if we'll talk Clippers today, but Clippers are doing. They're on fire right now. Like, let's not hate. But <laughs> um, yeah, they are. They're the first I, be, I believe we'll we'll defeat them and and play one of one of those two teams. They we'll don't see. scare me. The only teams that scare me is obviously the Nets, just purely on offensive firepower. In the West. No defense. That's not even one thing we touched on. Yeah, Brooklyn has no defense. Yeah, yeah. terrible defense. They made they made the the Cavaliers look like the Golden State. Yeah, Warriors. right. So, right. so I mean, like yeah. everybody in their mom. That's another thing. Just to throw everybody, out there. everybody's talking about it. All right, but I do want to get back to Kyrie because I don't want to like like shit on him too much. Well, Damn. actually, you know what? It's hard. <laughs> it's hard because like that time off. I'm cool with him, like, wanting to, like, step up for, like, social justice. He does a lot. He does a lot. I actually have this pulled up right here if you guys want to take a look. Dude, just like I said about Kuzma, if we saw Kyrie, Say what's, what's up, up, my guy? Yeah. How you doing? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm a fan. That's just what it is. I'm just talking straight basketball. I'm not talking political. I'm not yeah. talking personal. All right. Straight basketball. It just didn't need to happen. But right. Hold but on. I'll get back. I'll get back to this because... He said, look, he donated $323,000 to Feeding America. Yeah, I've heard, yeah. He purchased a house for George Floyd. Their family. Their their family. family. Mm -hmm. He committed $1.5 million to the WNBA of the people who didn't want to play during COVID. So he does a lot. I also have here, like, he donated seven pallets of food and math. He does a lot of things low-key. The only issue I have is, and it's only one issue, is that I'm cool with what he does. It's just that I don't like the... That he didn't tell the organization, his coaches, and his teammates. That was oh, my yeah, only yeah, issue. Okay. That was well, my I'm only saying. issue. But with those Kyrie. are separate. But those are separate things. But I'll say this about the uh, donations and all that. But what isn't every NBA player doing that? Like I'm just saying, I know I, it's like, great. He does it low key, I, it's though. good like, that he's he does LeBron it open the school. Right? It's good that he's LeBron <laughs> open the school. I don't want to compare. Like, oh, I give more. I get like no. I don't it's not do that. But I'm just saying though, it's great that he's giving. But and everyone pointed out, but it's like. Isn't it? Isn't every NBA player doing that? And mainly, well, not mainly, but is I guess also it's a tax write off for them. Yep. So okay. I'm just saying, like it, we were talking, it's great that Kyrie is doing shit for the community. Right. But like, um, I, what is that in comparison to other players? I don't know. You feel right. me? I don't. What are the like the stars that are like Kyrie's caliber? How much are they giving back? Like right. for example, I don't. I don't fucking know. But, uh. Like, the whole thing is like, oh, but Kyrie uh, does donations and shit. So, it's like, that's coming out, too, that well, narrative yeah, right now. I mean, but it's like, everyone does that thought, right? Right. But I guess that that's that's the issue I have with Kyrie, though, like, is that he feels that he can just, like, like, okay, so, like, I know he's trying to help out, like, the everyday people, right? That's, like, his, like, that's what he's doing, like, for social justice and stuff like that. I'm cool with that. Like, you can do that. But, like, I don't think it sets a good example. Maybe, like. This is just my, like, take on it is that, like, he's trying to, like, look out for the everyday people. But, like, say, for instance, I can never do that. Like, the everyday people can never, like, just, like, take days off from work, help out other people, and then come back whenever they feel like without, like, con- like if I went to my boss and told him, like, hey, no, not even tell him. I just took, like, a week off. But and then I just, come back. That's not why Kyrie missed, though. He that's missed because of a party. Well, that's why family. he was gone. Like, that's what regardless, I'm saying. Like, for us. Regardless, it's, it's the power of the player. In the modern era of the NBA, that's right. just what it they it, it it you can't compare the NBA to normal life. It's just different, you know. These guys get paid 
more than like entrepreneurs with businesses. Like, yeah, these guys. I are guess ridiculous. he was missing like, like he was okay with like losing eight hundred k. Dude, game these guys like are like that. set yeah, for life, generation to generation. Like, yeah. But but that, what you're saying right now is ex- is it? Ultimately, it's what LeBron created, the power of the player. Right. He I'm could do cool whatever that, he wants. Yeah. And the and and the Brooklyn Nets, at least for this year, they're not gonna do anything about it. Mm-hmm. They're just not. Because it's about talent, it's about tickets, it's about, well, I mean, no tickets right now, but right. views, like, that's just what it hey, is. Hey, so that's the real question, is how long the teams are going to tolerate fucking Kyrie's bullshit, basically. Because he's saying the but Nets they, are going to do it, but for how made, long? How they long made a good, you made a good point that it's, it's like, who wants to get Kyrie right now? Nobody. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, oh, there's teams Brooklyn that. has to put up with it. I don't think any team would do it. Yeah, maybe not. Just not now. Right. Not now. Not yeah. Maybe next offseason if know, they don't like, win at all. My thing is I'm scared, like, if Kyrie got traded, he'd be like, all right, so, like, like, I committed to Brooklyn, like, and you traded me. Like, why should I still play basketball? Like, what do I get out of it? He's, he's, he, he, I could see him doing some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's, like, that's Quitting. my thing. He like, could quit. Like, retire or something like that. Like, I don't yeah. think, like, that's, like, my only concern with trading for Kyrie. Like, if I'm the Lakers, of course I would love to have Kyrie on the team. But one, he probably doesn't want to play with LeBron no more. And two, is like... He doesn't want to reunite with his father? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I don't think your father, his father wants to reunite yeah. with him. Yeah. yeah, he does. That's the, Well, no. I, okay, LeBron was offended at the, sh- at the shade that yeah, Kyrie yeah. threw. But he's always going to forgive his son. Come on, what are we talking <laughs> about? It's unconditional love. Yeah. <laughs> No, I know like Kyrie's really close with his father and shit. So I don't want to. All right, like, okay, I don't go like all right, that, all right, okay. I get it, but <laughs> I'm basing this off of, hey, off of a, something. A reporter asked exactly. Him yeah, exactly. That's, that's why, why I'm why saying I, like, this. That's why I'm triggered. saying this. He's like LeBron's your father figure or some shit. And yeah. he's like, oh, so you really did me? He was my dad. And he was like triggered uh, as fuck. Like, he's like, not nah, chill. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's why, I, like, every, like every time you see LeBron's his father, I'm not trying to go there. Like, <laughs> oh man. All right, stepfather. My bad. Goddamn. Yeah, but. <laughs> I don't know. I just think if he has better communication with his team, at least his, like, teammates, I think Kyrie's situation wouldn't be as blown up as it is. But since you didn't tell, like, Steve Nash, Steve Nash, like, where's Kyrie, man? I don't know, man. I think there's going to be a change there in a couple years. Well, Kyrie thinks he's the head coach, so why would he tell Nash anything? He probably just told his teammates and be like, yo, like, I'm the coach. Apparently, KD didn't know either, though. That's what, like, that's what concerns me, dude. Like, dude, like, you don't tell no one. And then he tells him when he comes back. I just think he has the luxury, I guess. Like, he's okay with losing 800K. He can take. No, I was like over anyone. that. Was like one point five mil or some shit, right? I don't know. I just remember. I think it was like eight hundred k. No, it was like eight hundred k or something. Oh, yeah, that's At that's least what I fees, read. NBA fees. Yeah, and I'm like, like he has the luxury oh. to do that. Like no one else can do that. Like even if like they have as much influence as he does, like I don't see anyone taking. Like I think it shows more that you can do that. Like your social justice, spend time with your family and stuff like that, and still play basketball. But what did he do? He was doing all that. He was buying houses for George Floyd and shit when on the break. Is that what you're saying? Is he was, he was I don't, doing I don't all these know donations? Exactly, but I know he was spending time with his family because like his sister's his yeah. There birthday. was there was like a I don't know what happened, but and he then, said he has family time. And then th- and then remember he was on that Facetime call or the Zoom call like during a game. It was about like social justice reform. Or yeah, I like, saw I saw that. I yeah, saw that. So I just think like you can still like be involved in that and play basketball. I mean, he's the first to miss like this, at least in yeah, recent history. And, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the NBA, like, cracks down on it. Like, yo, like, we got to do – because players can end up doing stuff like that. I don't know, though. Like, in the it, future. Like, I this think is the, a Kyrie move, though. I, I think don't know the, I think players have so much power, bro. It's not even funny. Like, right. like he's going to do all that. He could do it again. That's He'll be on an NBA team next year. I honestly would not be, be surprised paid. if, like, later on in the season he does something like that again. Yeah, those I t- mean, it, it's yeah. It could, like, it's I wouldn't even be surprised if he does it like in the playoffs. <laughs> it's just, it's, that's like, just, and it will cost him like a final. It's trip. what the NBA is, dude. If you have the talent, like someone's gonna take you. Someone will take advantage. I mean, I know this is unrelated, There's, but look at the, look at what happened with the Astros and the Dodgers, right? You had that whole cheating scandal, and look, a, a lot of Astros got good deals just this this past off season. Yeah. So it's just like it don't matter how bad you get, what you do, if you have the talent in sports. Like, you will land somewhere. You will get paid. Like, it's just, it is what it is. Yeah, but it's just a trip. Yeah. It's a trip. But um, what I do want to transition to is I saw this on Twitter, and I thought it was hilarious. Pull this up. James Harden, KD, and, <laughs> and Kyrie won a sex ad <laughs> against Colin Sexton. <laughs> That's funny. Bro, this is what trips me out. Look, 
He had 20 straight points, the Cavs points. Yes, sir. And they were in high. overtime. In overtime. 42. Yes. I, I got to make a public announcement because when he got drafted, I didn't say this publicly, but I said to like Ax on there, I was like, dude, look, I think Colin Sex is a mute bus. Nah, I, I did like, not. I did not. This is just me. I'm going to say it publicly now. I'm sorry. I thought <laughs> Colin Sexton was going to be a bus. I thought he was going to be another like Patrick Beverly, Marcus Smart type player, not a superstar. I was like, number four, that's pretty high. I'm sorry. Nah, dude, dude, is, He's a dude is a beast. Dude is a beast. He I'm, has the attitude for it. He has the talent for it. Going off this year, he's on my fantasy team. I'm all about him. Nice, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to say publicly, I'm sorry. <laughs> People can shit on me like, fool, you don't know basketball. Uh, Colin Sexton, I'll, I'll take that. Edit. I don't know if you saw. Yeah. Um, I don't know where edit. I read. I think it was ESPN where they said that um, Colin Sexton went up to um, the the Brooklyn locker room yesterday when they played. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, like lace up guy. them shoes, like, be ready, like, I'm coming, like, or, or something like that, you know? And he came and he, and he, he I knew took he over. was that, like, that guy, like, he doesn't give a fuck. He go at you ever since this clip. I'm gonna pull this up for you guys. Ever yeah, since and that's this, where I learned. That. Ever since this, I Although, knew he was about it. He don't give a fuck. He's about it. Look at that. <laughs> so I'm not surprised about that Brooklyn story. Bro. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, Sexton is a is a beast. He's a dog. Hey, look, a homie looked away though after. Yeah, the, like he's trying to like got in his face. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited for Garland to come back, and yes. it's a great thing for Sex Line because he's in your fantasy team. That's what you're excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Low key, but. Zach got the biggest deal. Quick story. He was on like on a waivers. Oh, what was he? He was just like he was on waivers. Yeah, he, was on yeah. Waivers, yeah. And he picked them up. Stole no one but drafted him. He stole in our, yeah, in no our one league. drafted him. Uh, but I'm excited for him to come back. And here's the other thing: Kevin Love is not back. He's injured. Yeah, he's also on. He the will bench. be coming back maybe in a couple weeks. Like uh, I don't know. I never thought Cleveland would bounce back from Braun. At least not in the next, or I, at least not now. But it seems like they got a bright future now with those two. Yeah, lands, I didn't think so. they would like even make noise. They until found Braun their retired. second version of Kyrie, pretty much. So they're starting yeah. over in a way. Yeah, I want to yeah, pull this up for yeah. Colin Sexton. Look at his stats. He's averaging 27 points. Yes, sir. Two rebounds and three points. Yes, sir. 53% from the yes, field. Yes, sir. And 50% from three. Yes, sir. Stop it. That's, that's Jeff's crazy. Jeff's all hyped about that. Well, He's in my fantasy team. team. I get excited. Uh, <laughs> He's been injured for a while. He came back finally. So, yeah. Again, I'm sorry, Colin Sexton. I thought you were going to be a bust. You nah, he's solid me in though, the comment man. section. He's yeah. solid though. Uh, I, I don't I'll know. I mean, out. the Cavs are developing. Uh, Darius Garland is is pretty good as well. Uh, yes. I think they'll be back. I think they'll be back. I want to check out Darius. Garland. They'll be on a top. You know, I, I Maybe think he should return soon. But he was, yeah, he was averaging he's seventeen. Right yeah, yeah, seventeen and uh, three and six. Yeah, he's solid. And the thing with him, um, I liked that, him coming. Is out that of in college? college? Well, in college, he only played a couple games. Yeah, and he got injured. Uh, um, I don't know what the injury was, but he was out for like most of his like college time, so he was kind of a toss up in the draft. And and um, I think was this during the when the Lakers had the draft? I don't think so. No, he got drafted last year. He's a second year. Player. Okay, yeah. So so um, he was kind of a toss up, but a lot of people said he had skills in those four games. He just showed like insane like insane skills. Yeah. Um. So it was a toss up, but they're doing well. I mean, they're drafting well. They drafted Kyrie, great. They drafted LeBron, great. Sexton, great. Garland, great. I mean, they I mean, whoever their scouts are. Yeah. They're doing pretty good. I'm not going to hate like post LeBron like Yeah. Like they're making noise post LeBron. That's what's surprising yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I mean, Cleveland is a team to talk about. So all right, it is what it quickly, is. I'm going to hop into this. Speaking of Cleveland, Cleveland, currently, at the time of this recording, Cleveland is six in the Eastern Conference playoffs bracket. So the question to you guys is, wow. will Cleveland make the playoffs at the end of the season? This is the list. This so is what I will is, say. All right, this is what I will say looking at that list right now. Orlando might f have a good chance. They've had some injuries. Um, Evan Fournier, who's in my in my fantasy team, <laughs> and Markel Fultz, and and Mar Markel loss. Fultz is out, but Fournier is back. They won when he came back yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I like Orlando, but I like Cleveland better than Orlando. Uh, the I'll Hawks go, are okay. Yeah. Uh, Trey Young is not what I thought he was going to be this year. He's, I mean, it might take him some time. He's not balling out. Like uh, like last year's average. I'll back he's up. Not. I'll back up Trey Young. Only and he's in your fantasy team, right? Yeah, I picked so he was my first pick. Tell me about Trey Young. Yeah, because this is my thing is last year it was pretty much him and everybody. Him and John Collins pretty much. Yeah, okay. So I he's, will say he that, was yeah. that that guy that put up the numbers with the crappy team. Now and now he, he has, has a, a solid team. team. And I will say Bogdan Bogdanovich is out. 
Uh, and, he hurt his and, ankle. And, and uh, Gallinari. There you go. Yeah. So now, and Clip Capella's hoping. So I, I think they'll stay in the playoffs. Um, Because those are the two, like, actually, it's three teams. It's Cleveland, the Hawks, and the Knicks. Those are the three man, teams. where's my knowing. Wizards pick, they're man? Sick. Oh, my God. The big Apple. They're 14, but Westbrook's oh, out. Uh, they're trash. I didn't think they were going to make the playoffs. I believed in Bradley Beal. The but one I couldn't do in it in the Eastern Conference playoffs. The one that's like scaring me is Zach's Miami Heat and the Raptors. I think my you know what Miami reminds me of the 2011 Mavericks, where they're Let's like go. they're like a sleeper <laughs> team, right? But they're ready to go whenever Once when they're they healthy, they're ready to go. I think they're meant in. for the playoffs. There's those teams yeah. that are meant for the playoffs. That's what right. my, that's what Miami reminds me. They're, they're gonna young. sneak in the first seed, and or I'm sorry, they're gonna sneak in as the eighth seed. And who are they gonna be yeah. playing? Whoever's they, the first seed, the Sixers. Oh, okay. Like, they're the type of team where, like, they kind of, like, in the playoffs, you do not want to play them. Yeah, for sure. Even it's, if you're a high seed, you don't want right. to see them in the first round. Yeah. Well, especially with, like, I mean, home field advantage is, like, less of a advantage, I would now say. It has forward. to be. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to there's less, there's gonna be less fans. It's now. It Pretty much, matter. yeah. That's why I think, that's why I was worried, like, people will, or, like, coaches will be resting the players and shit, like, the last... A couple of weeks, especially because they're like, "What? Well, how much? How important is this home court advantage?" You know, obviously you still have to travel, right? And if it's seven games, you're traveling to their city more often, or you know, four times, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, other than the travel, it's like, is there really is there really home court uh-huh. advantage? Like Lakers won't have it because well, we have fans. Right. LA, it, it don't even California. matter when we go up against the Clippers in the Western Conference yeah. Finals. We're gonna be in Staples Center the yeah, whole time. Regardless. Don't even matter. Like, like Lakers, yeah. I think they haven't won a game at home or something like that. Who the Lakers? But we're really? in the second seed. Yeah. What well, do you we mean have we like haven't a, won a, a Lakers? Or we lost? Like, uh, I'm sorry, not on yeah, the road. We're undefeated right now. No, no. But I'm saying home, like home court, like all our home games. Right. Have, we've been losing. Like they get comfortable. Our, our record is like like three and four. Or something. Oh wow. Okay. I, I don't have it on the top. Gotcha, dude. I, it. One thing I will say about that, it's very interesting how when the Lakers were trash, we cared so much about the regular season, right? Now we're right. the champions. We're kind and of to like, be honest, yeah. I don't even care about this, right. the regular I season don't care. anymore. Yeah, sure. I don't that's care. A, I'm just waiting for playoffs. And it's Lakers crazy. Are, that's championship status. Because we're so spoiled like, as Lakers. Yeah, we're yeah, so we are. We are. I, we mean, ha- I mean, we haven't been for seven years, though. But, yeah, but I, I guess overall diehard. we are. Like, overall in our lifetime, LA. we've been spoiled. But re- I feel like Golden State did. Like a couple years ago, when like they're winning every year, people yeah. don't care about the regular season. And last then the year was like playoffs, a everyone's check. there. Yeah. Last year and this year is like a reality check for the Warriors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But going back to the Eastern Conference, um, I want to go to the Knicks. Are you guys buying or selling stock on the Knicks? Selling. Oh, really? Mm. We got to hear your take then. I think uh, I think Julius Randle's going off. I mean, if I'm New York right now, I'm putting Julius Randle on the market. Oh shit! And I am trying to figure out if I can get Bradley Beal. Oh, that's a good trade. And some picks. Wouldn't you want to pair him though? I feel like you would want to pair those guys. Uh, yeah, I think probably, I think right? I next, think yeah. Julius Randle is um, a good player because he's on a good contract. I would. Keep he's on a great contract, yeah. and that's why I think it's like the oppor- sell high. I don't think Julius Randle is going to keep this up. Dude is is almost averaging like a triple double, like pretty much. Like right. he, I is, think he can keep it up. Be, or I don't think he can. The minutes, he's, the and minutes, minutes and the volume. It's New York. Tell me, tell the me usage. He's getting tons of usage over there. Okay, L- let's say we added KD to New York. Mm-hmm. Is Julius Randle doing that? No, but that's exactly my point. That's but why that's he's my thing. Continue. That's my thing, though. That's my thing, though. You trade him for a superstar player, and you get maybe a pick because you're basically selling a young. Star future player, right? right? Like I think you gotta sell high on Julius Randle. I was not a big fan of him when he was here in LA. I was, I just I was not. <laughs> I was not a big Julius Randle fan. He's here now, and all of a sudden he's this big like sell high New York. I just remember sell high. texting like dog. We gotta tra- dude. There dog. was games where we literally lost because of Julius Randle. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. He's having he a hot season, shots, uh, but th- he wasn't doing this last year. He wasn't like all of a sudden he's this triple double machine. Like no, he's not. Sell high New York. Sell high. Take advantage of this right now. I asked Stephen A. Smith, <laughs> the biggest, the biggest Knicks fan on the planet. Ask him, would you trade Julius Randle to get like a Bradley Beal and something? He would say yes. Yeah, I think you trade that. But I, I feel like if you trade Julius for Bradley Beal, you're no better than the Washington. But not just right Bradley Beal. You'd figure out something. I mean, they got Mitchell Robinson, who's a great center. My they got some. Bounded. They got some good pieces. Like it's just like you know. I just think Alec Burks. My my point in telling you this is that I don't think Julius Randle's going to keep this up. 
I think second half of the season or next year, he's just he's going to cool down. He's a good player. He might average 18 a game. But almost giving me a triple-double like Westbrook, I'm sorry. I don't see it. No, when the Lakers, I saw that potential. Like, he can get you, like, 18, 10, and, like, 6 or 6. He, there was a game he got, like, 18 rebounds or something. Like, it's crazy. He's going off right now. So, my, I'm, I'm buying stock with the Knicks. I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they should trade, like, their young players, like Kevin Knox, R.J. Barrett, and then get Bradley Beal and pair him with, like, it doesn't have to be Bradley Beal necessarily, but like, like a like a star to pair with Julius and see how that goes. Especially, I don't think Eastern Julius Conference. is it. I think he's. But a good we'll piece. see. He's never made an All Star team. All of a sudden, we're gonna say he's like a top well, player. No, no. But I'm saying like as like he's kind of like. He will make the All Star team this year, probably. There's no All Star. I mean, there's no All Star oh, game. Yeah. But if there was an All Star, he's definitely an yeah. All Star player this year. There's no all-star game. I mean, that's there. probably something we should talk about in the future. Right. All-star yeah. list. But I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm not a fan of Julius. I mean, I like Julius Randle. He's a great player. I'm just not a fan that in terms of him being like this superstar player. Like, Same. he's putting up numbers better than Westbrook, better than like a lot of the – like. He's a hooper for he's sure. He's putting up crazy numbers. But my thing, he's pretty much similar to me. Like, how I look at him is that he's Zach Levine in the Bulls. Zach Levine, I think, is still average like twenty points a game easily on on a good team, yeah. championship team. There, yeah, but I like that. Yep, he's putting inflated numbers. Like Devin Booker in the previous years, he's putting all these inflated numbers for the Suns. Julius Randle's putting inflated numbers for the Knicks. But since they're in the Eastern Conference, I think they can make the playoffs. Yes, I, maybe, maybe they agree. can. It's maybe like asking can. me if I mean, the, the Suns last. What year are they fighting for? The eighth seed? Yeah, what are they fighting for right now? Okay, there you go. Yeah, they probably will. I mean, I don't know, but I guess low key. I'm buying stock. But out of these three teams, who do you think is hopping out? Cavs, Hawks, or Knicks? Because I feel like the Heat are going to make the playoffs. I don't think the Raptors are going to make the playoffs. Cavs, Hawks, Knicks. Dang. I, that's a hard one. But the thing is, I want the Hornets to make the playoffs. because Oh, the ball. shit. My boy Gordon Hayward home away from is home. going oh, off. He's that's having the I'm best season about. of his White life. White America, get on your feet. <laughs> oh, God. White America, stand up. Charlotte. Gordon Hayward. I you think can still do it. You can still make the league. Little <laughs> white kids out there. The Hornets need to stop playing and start in the middle. I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. I think Atlanta hop off. Yeah, I, I only agree. I had Atlanta higher. I had them like four seed. Here's the deal: they have Trey Young, great. Mm-hmm. They signed Rajon Rondo, but still a good move, I guess. But the Lakers gave him a lot of stock because he stayed healthy, mm-hmm. and we won the chip. He gets injured. He's a little older. He's a right. great mind. Uh, probably the best basketball mind in basketball right now. I mean, next to LeBron or whatever. I mean, Bogdan is out. Bogdanovich, he's out, and he's going to be out for a while. He had, like, a really bad injury, and he's coming off the bench. That's true. They right? should start him low-key. And they're losing game. Like, they came into the season, like, I think they came in at least a 3-4 seed. That's the same here. They had the, the best. And it's start. early, but I don't know. I mean, the way things are going now, yeah. Atlanta. I Yeah, I – that was my pick. Cause I think Atlanta is gonna hop off, and they were like my highest. Like I had them like being a four seed too. But and I think tr- and, and a side note, I think Trey. I forgot what exactly, but Trey Young's uh, three point percentage has gone down compared to last year. He's not doing as well. Well, it's, it's only, we're only like what three weeks into this. I guess. So I guess. like uh, I'm not like five. He's five. Really? Oh yeah, we're in week five. Yeah, yeah. fantasy. Oh yeah. fantasy. Yeah, that's yep. how we look at it. I yeah. don't know why I feel like time's flying by, but I feel like because. The injuries is what's going to hurt the Hawks. Like, they're not going to be able to catch up. You feel that, me? Yeah, right, that's what right. I think, too. Yeah. Short so season. I, yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. That so, I think they're injury prone. They got some older players. Their young players are getting injured. That's what I, yeah. Yeah, and I think the Heat will fill in that slot. But I think they'll move. I think the Heat could, like, legit be a six seed. Yeah. I want to see the Hornets, but I bought stock on the, on the Knicks. The Cavs. The Cavs are a tricky one because they could trade Kevin Love. I love the Cavs. I love, I love the too. Cavs right yeah. now. They're just like that. Dude, young they have three solid, solid centers, right? Jared Allen, Dre, uh, Drummond, and, and – well, Kevin Love is power forward, but he could be – I wouldn't somewhere. be surprised if they trade one of them. They though. could trade one of them and get another, like, solid guard, solid, like, two I like think two they need pieces. a player. They could do that, dude, and if they do that, watch out. Like, 8-7 seed, why not? Maybe Bradley Beal to the Cavs. Right. I don't think so. Drummond, include Drummond. No. Maybe like Garland so. and like no. Drummond. No. Bradley Beal. Do Bradley does, I don't think you could do Garland. When they made that James Harden deal mm-hmm. and the AD deal, uh, Bradley Beal right now with the numbers he's putting up, they're going to want a lot. I don't think Cavs should do that with Bradley Beal. I think but. Bradley Beal. I love Bradley Beal. I think he's like a true hooper. 
His stats, I think, are a little inflated too. He's averaging like what thirty or something. He's like, I think he was like interesting stat. He's on um, so far as of today, uh, four games. He's av- he scored under thirty one points. Only four. Yeah. See, so all uh, the other games, he's uh, he's scoring at least thirty or more. God. Yeah, but I think like realistically, on a good team, he could average like twenty three, twenty four points a game, like twenty five. I, I believe in Bradley be Beal. Like Zach player. said, he believes in Jimmy. I believe in Bradley Beal. <laughs> yeah. I feel He's like spinning it back. Bradley Beal's yeah. been a little too loyal to the Wizards. He was like excited to play with John Wall. I think he wants to leave. He has to. When Harden got traded, um, I don't know if and if anyone saw, but Bradley Beal tweeted. He was like, he put something like, "What the hell? Like, wow, or something like." Right. Why couldn't me, that be me? And yeah, and that's what <laughs> I, that's what I interpreted as. It's like, bro, like. You want to win some rings, you got to get out of there. Hey, Lakers, Washington ain't doing anything. Lakers, the Nets have a big three. I think it's time for us. I mean, we got nothing to trade them for. But well, I guess. we have the contracts to fill up. We just don't have picks or nothing. Yeah, yeah, we can't trade any of them. All right. I guess I'll ask uh, Zach, do you think – where do you think would be the best fit for Bradley Beal then? Um, shit. Damn, if that's a tough trade. one. I mean, from his standpoint, I'm sure he would love to go to New York. It's an easy move and shit, but maybe Miami even? That'd probably be a good, like... Because Miami lost James Harden. They try to get KD. I think Miami is a team that's lined up to make a big move. But I hear they don't... They're supposed to be honest. Yeah, but I hear they don't want to trade... What's it called? Um, Tyler Hero. That's like... But they got got Robinson. They got some picks. I think they say they don't want to trade Tyler Hero. I think they they'd be willing for the right player because nah because if they wouldn't give him up for Harden, it's because here's the thing: Tyler like, Hero is eventually going to be a max contract, right? Mm. Not in Miami. I think he will. I think Miami. someone will, but someone will. Yeah. So they're going to end up Charlotte losing him. <laughs> they got Adebayo. They got Butler. Right? They already got two star players. I mean, unless they plan on being the Golden State Warriors, you better max him. If not, someone else is going to max Tyler Hero. I don't think they'll max. Uh, I think they'll give him like a twenty mil. Bro, they max Brandon Ingram, like. But he's an all star though, and like. But I think Tyler Hero will be that too. He's only what nineteen, twenty. I don't know. But whatever. I mean, that's I'm all for topic. white America, but I'm just that clown that's a different shit with topic. the lip. With the lip, the no. Nah, right, I'm, I'm sorry. And they still wear the shirts. That's what's funny. Is I don't want to get shirt. into him. All right, all right, he'll wear a bad. shirt. <laughs> I'm triggering Zach. My point is, I want to get. I want to talk about that. I think Miami's willing to trade him. He the motherfucker will wear a shirt with his own face on it, doing the lifting. Like wow, bro. that is Do a not trend, know bro. how corny Joel you are. Joel wore his own jersey to a club a couple years ago. That's, <laughs> that's what gang, it is. That's, that's gangster, diff- though. Yeah, that's that's I like that. Though. No I one said like that about Joel Embiid. I like that. Know? But yeah. him wearing the of his own self doing the lip fucking thing. It's like, dude, Absolutely. you remember that you lost? Yeah. Yeah. Remember <laughs> that you lost? But it's stamp in history, man. Oh my god, for real. That's a stamp in history. He's a meme. He was a meme, basically. At one point. At least for, especially for Laker fans, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> we want that shirt too. I want to clown those on him though, with with when he's doing that face. Yeah, but uh, sticking to the Eastern Conference, I want to get into the Seventy Sixers. What do you think of like? They're the number one seed. Apparently, Joel Embiid is like I saw on ESPN or Sports Center or something that he's like leading like vote getters to get MVP. It's number one is Joel, number two is KD, number three was Jokic. What do you guys feel on that? Um, I think Embiid has to be the front runner because if if he has a full season where he's healthy, that'll be like the big narrative. And it's if especially if it's like a, uh, I guess this is he's having career highs right now. So because he hasn't been playing lately though because of COVID. Okay. Remember their team only has like six or seven active players. That's something. right. I heard about that. Yeah, they had seven active for one game, mm-hmm. and I'm and I think one or yeah, so. I think Embiid has to be the front runner because he's always been so injured. So now it's like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. Like, because they're the first seed. It's kind of like Giannis. Like, I feel yeah, like it's kind of like he does the first team in the East, number one seed in the in a conference where they have KD, Kyrie, and James right. Harden, and Giannis is in that conference. Giannis, Joel, the most overrated superstar of all time. Yes, can we get into that? <laughs> I'm good. all for that. Most overrated superstar. Remember, James Harden said that it doesn't take skill to dunk, run down the lane and dunk if you're seven foot. Dunk every play. I think he says something like that. He's like, I excited like, about Shaq. That's what they. That's what they tried to about right, KD well, and them. Can, can we look up Shaq. Uh, what what's what is Giannis averaging right now? Like, what are his stats? I don't even because care about that. I nah, know he's dominating. I know, a, he's dominating. I know he's dominating. But yeah, he, there's like, a lot. That's wise, but there, I mean, I think yeah, because everyone puts him in this light of like the greatest player, like right now. I guess back to back MVPs. I man. guess on, yeah, this is crazy. I mean, I'm not gonna say he's not a superstar player. Oh, he's obviously a superstar player because 
Let's see everybody can average what he averaged. He's averaging 27, 10, and 5. 53% He's just the, the most overrated superstar. That's it. Yeah. He's, He's averaging superstar. 27, 10, and 5. All right. Yeah. How many minutes is he overrated. playing? Does it say Does it say that? Uh, minutes per game? No, it doesn't show. It okay. shows field goal percentage. I mean, PR. I'm not going to... I'm not going to say he's not a superstar. I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying he's the most overrated superstar we ever seen in the history of the league. He averages 32 minutes a game. And Steve Nash, And that, those are low minutes for a superstar. But, I mean, I, I guess he is a, a somewhat overrate, uh, overrated, for sure. The most overrated ever I think, yeah. of all time. I mean, I don't know. I'd have to of go back time? in history. No, I don't know about all I'd time. have to go Why back who? in history. Why who? Currently. Well, Steve Nash might be up there or what? For nah, he's most still he got back to back all like he's MVPs like, though. He's not considered like he's not a top five point guard of all time. I still so think I he would, is. Well, no, I, I can name five on the top of my head. Hit it, Magic Johnson, John Stockton, Chris Paul is better than Steve Damn. Nash and Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd, that's what I was gonna say. No, too. I, I'm gonna five. put Steph Nash Curry over. over. Oh yeah, Steph Curry. Right there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You can even argue doesn't. Westbrook is better than. No, I'm not gonna do that. I won't, no, do I'll, I'll I won't do that. Yeah. No, that's I but, won't do that. No, but yes, I agree with Giannis. He's a seven foot Westbrook in the East. Okay, I, I, I think. I'll tell you. Westbrook. I'll tell you this. I don't think Giannis will win a ring in Milwaukee. No, no. unless he gets traded. He is incredibly lucky, and there are injuries that happen with the <laughs> teams, things like that. But if if you give me full healthy teams with what it is now, he's not winning a ring. I think. Just like CJ McCollum and Damian Lillard are winning are are not winning a ring in Portland, like that's what I'm gonna say for the East Side. With the thing Milwaukee. is in the playoffs, it's easy to guard Giannis because he still doesn't have a jump shot. Nope. He, and I remember last year in the in the playoff, or not maybe not in the bubble, but right before he was shooting threes, he was making everybody's like, "Oh my God, Giannis is gonna be this big time three. He's not. He's still not. Stop How it. long have he's they like been a Ben Simmons? He can't shoot anything. Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> that's. A, I would love to see a three point contest with Giannis. That's what I'm saying. No, like, no, no. Hey, shot. A little fun fact. Shots taken. Fun fact. Ben Simmons has taken, I think, five threes so far this season. How many um, has he made though? Because I know Dwight I think made one. one. I think Dwight Dwight made he one. only attempted five. Uh, ben, right. uh, ben made one. So we're at week five. So he's averaging one three uh, a week. What's the over under on his three point shots attempted for the year? For like fifteen Simmons? Yeah. What would you say? Like over fi- fifteen? <laughs> Maybe six. He's at he five. Shoot one though. more. He might shoot one more, and that's it. He be, damn. I'm gonna say ten. The over under is ten. So you're saying under ten? He's taking under, under 10. ten. Yeah, threes? I'll do under ten. Dang. I'm gonna say over ten. <laughs> I'm gonna say he, I'm gonna say Ben Simmons know, takes over man. ten threes in know. this entire season. Right. We're gonna check back in on that one though check for sure. In. I guess we could get a hot take. Who would you guys rather have, Ben Simmons or Giannis? I'm still taking Giannis. I'm still yeah, taking Giannis. Right, cool. That's not yeah. even All right, we're agreeing on that one because he's a two-time MVP. But going back to Giannis being the most overrated superstar, he's not even the best player in his own conference. He's back-to-back MVP. He was defensive player of the year. And they asked him, why didn't you guard Jimmy Butler? He's like, why would you ask me that? In the NBA Finals, Anthony Davis was guarding Jimmy Butler like pretty much the whole time. Opening night, who was... Anthony Davis guarding Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Anthony Davis got robbed of that defensive player of the year. Yep. Giannis, the most overrated superstar. It's because, dude, like current the, basketball. The awards are not their narratives, their stories. That's what they are. They gave them to the hottest story. Yeah. I think they try to push yeah, Giannis to be that yeah. next like I like that. best player to compete with. Like he might be better than MJ. He's a jump shot away from being better than MJ. Oh, it's so dumb. It. Like I just yeah. It's I, I put no weight in those awards anymore. Right. Like Yeah. They might they should turn him into a bad guy in the NBA. He might Giannis? get more clout. Like yeah. ever since Shaq lost to to Steve Nash and he makes it a big deal, like like That's, oh you took my me. you took my MVP. Yeah, I side with Shaq. To on that. me, dude, it's like ever since that time, like it's like Kobe only won one MVP. Right. Like, what are we, right. What That's are we another doing? One too. Like, That's another. Yeah. Kobe, if if, if it point, were up to me, the the past, like I don't know. Fumble. Fumble. Cut. 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 We got a comment on our old vid- our last week's video when we talked about James Johnson. Let me pull up the comment because apparently this might be his father. This might be his father. We don't know. We'll pull it up. <laughs> Willie Johnson. This is what he says. For the three of you, Jeffrey wasn't included. I was he not emphasized. here for that podcast. <laughs> Talking about James Johnson, if the three of you would like to come to Cheyenne, Wyoming, and put it to the test, come on. And yes... 
you can get a black belt at that age because Zach said eight year olds can get black belts. So he was d- low key dissing him in your fake schools. I'm not six nine and don't weigh fifty. He spelled since wrong. He put sense like you sensing something. Since none of you know anything about us, please come see us in Caps. We don't lie. So a little background on this story. We low key like we talked about James Johnson. We talked about how he's a fake MMA fighter in a jokingly matter. And people's only comeback to us is, why don't you guys fight him? Why don't you guys fight him? Oh, he's 6'9", 250. He'll beat you guys up. Let's get the record straight. We know he will beat us up. He is 6'9", 250. He's about almost a foot taller than me. I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10 five, on a good day. I yes, think he's bigger than LeBron. He's bigger than LeBron. Obviously, he will beat us up without even knowing any fighting. Like He doesn't even know how to fight. He could like Just naturally, he could beat us up. With that being said, this whole James Johnson thing, all we've been asking for is we just want to see a sparring session, a bookkeeping of his professional fighting record, or an actual, like, him fighting. Because I don't get how you can be a celebrity, a professional athlete, have 27-0 and 0 MMA record. I think it was, was it 20-0? 7-0 yeah. and 0 MMA record, 20-0 yeah, yeah, kickboxing. There's black and white footage. There's video, they're like, oh, this is what everyone says. Either two things. Oh, he'll beat you up. We already got that clear. Yes, he will. Or videos wasn't a thing back then. 2007, that's when, like, YouTube started. You're telling me that, like, no one has a video of him having a professional fight? Promoters, gyms, his family. Like Zach said, he has, like, videos of his, what was it, your sister's recital or something? Dance recital from the 1980s. 1980s. Like, there's videos, there's, like... Black and white videos on YouTube. There's color video on YouTube. Like, I'm pretty sure someone was there. Or even just, like, a record book. Like, if you could show us, like, official records what of you MMA think, fighting. That's all we need. <laughs> this is Zach? why this all started. We just put it in, like, a friendly light. Saying, like, oh, like, we would get beat up, like, to have proof, like, that he has fighting online. Well, okay. Here, yeah. Here's another thing that we have to say is yeah. even Willie. Jo- we're not fighters. We don't claim to be boxers mm-hmm. and shit. Because even Willie Johnson, old Grandpa Willie, fucking James Johnson's dad, beat us all up probably. And he everybody he knows, we'll just say him and everybody he knows will beat us up. They're all black belts in karate. We believe that. Mm-hmm. But the seven and zero MMA, we're just questioning that a little bit. It just raises a little bit of red flags. All There's we want no is M- proof. There. I mean, yeah, just. Even if there's one video that gets put out, it's like, or just more people to come out and say it because right. here's what I think happened with JJ, with James Johnson, okay? The, the, the story goes, the, the only reported story around an MMA fight for him goes that after he was at the age of 18, after an AAU game, he went and squabbled with this dude named fucking Damon Clark. Right. And uh, this guy, Damon Clark, later went on to be pro. But it, when you look up Damon Clark, it'll show that he went pro in 06. So James Johnson was 18 in the age of 18 in 07. So the only way that story could have been true is if JJ fought this guy when he was like 15 or some shit, right? Like right. JJ would have had to fought him as a teen. So maybe if anything happened, maybe I'm thinking JJ went and brawled with this dude in a backyard <laughs> on some backyard <laughs> shit, on some backyard fighting shit, right? Right. But that's not MMA though, right? Like that's like some. It sounds like he did some Kimbo slice shit because oh. <laughs> at, slice. why the fuck would JJ have been in AAU basketball at 18 years old? Like that's what the report claims and shit. Like right. that he was he was after a AAU game. So after a full on game of him playing basketball, he went and beat this dude up. Like I don't know, bro. The the what they claim does not line up. The, the name they use, uh, it was fucking, like, Damon Clark or whatever, that guy. He did end up being a pro. You can find, like, record of him. But, like, so that's what's weird about the whole story is, like, maybe they did fight, but right. it was some backyard shit. That doesn't mean you're 7-0 in MMA. Mm-hmm. Just because you have a black belt in karate, that don't mean you're 7-0 in, right. in, in MMA, right? So... That's all we are saying. That's all we're pointing out. Is right. And then we just threw in jokes like, oh, we'll fight him like if we have to. But like, obviously, we'll get beat up. But I would get beat up for 50K. <laughs> you would fly out to Cheyenne to fight uh, James Johnson if he wanted to box you at the gym? 
if I'll go around with him if you pay me 50k to get beat up by a 6'9", 250. He's about a foot taller than me. I'll do it. Then he would have record online of him fighting. That's the only footage that people would have. Yeah. See, we are, we are personally fans of James Johnson. I've been watching him since Miami the, Heat. The Miami Heat, yeah, forty and 40, 41 and forty one season with uh, the other Tyler Johnson and Goran Dragic and right. uh, Kelly Olynyk. All these like r- role players, basically, they they put together a, a real good team. Forty one, forty one Heat. I believed in James Johnson. It wasn't until the Nate Robinson fight that I was like. Right. Let that's me what look brought up. up. That's what brought up like which NBA player could actually beat up Jake Paul, and then we're like everyone says James John uh, James Johnson is this like what, what what's his nickname again Bloodsport. He's yeah, like the Bloodsport. seven and zero little Ali little Ali. Guy. There you go. So like that's when we started doing our research. Like okay, let's see him fight. Nowhere to be found. No MMA footage. Nothing, bro. That's why it's just. And if he did fight in that time frame, it doesn't make sense because he was in the NCAA playing for Wake Forest, right? Right. So that so. means he would have to play college ball, and then after his games or whatever, he would do his professional fighting. Which is, you're not allowed to be a professional athlete if you're playing in the NCAA, especially like amateur fighting or like pro MMA fighting. I'm just saying. If you're a celebrity <laughs> professional athlete and we can't find a sparring session, a professional fight, or bookkeeping of your professional fighting record, that's all we're questioning. Jeff, so you tell me you won't box him for 50K for me. The family wants me. Battle. I got a whole family of fucking black belts that want to fight shots taken now, bro. I mean, it is what it is. You're, I'm not your fucking Pokemon. Unless you need to. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going you to summon have, me. To no, all right. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> no, all right. But you don't You don't have any take on that on the fact that there's no video evidence at all? You watch combat sports. You watch, No, you I mean, I mean, there's, I, mean I, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, I think I even have a little sparring video from when I was younger. Exactly. Um, I can find video on Jeffrey. Yeah, I have I video guess. on Jeffrey. I have video on me and Zach White, but we can't find a professional. How about athlete, this? Celebrity. If an MMA, if James Johnson releases him an MMA fight, we're gonna release the video of us boxing. Just like we were the first people to talk about. That's another thing is you can go look at Reddit, and if you type in James Johnson Reddit, they have like all these fucking long ass posts about delving deep into the history of James Johnson. And yeah, like, I've seen those. Right. They're saying the same shit. We are. We're the first ones just to talk about it on camera. camera but right. before this, people have been talking about it for like over a year, probably on on, on the forums and shit. And they go into it way deeper than we do. Right. Than we do. They go into like real evidence of the shit. So, right. and we're not like attacking his character. We're not saying like he's not this and that. We just want proof. That's all we want is proof. Obviously, we like kind of like go on the edge, like saying like, oh, like how old is he, James? James Johnson? I think he's. I don't know. Let me look it up. Late thirties, maybe. So he was 07. in 07, He was he's like eighteen LeBron's years age, old, like thirty four or something like that. Mm. He was eighteen years old in okay. 07. So yeah. eighteen plus. Whoa. Thirteen years later, fourteen years later, he's thirty-three years old. Okay, and I hate the argument he's that, that like his videos haven't young. been out that long. YouTube has like wasn't a thing back then, but I'm saying like, wouldn't you want to record this? Like right. this is history. Like your son's being an MMA fighter. Like, yeah, you come from if you're if you are the family who owns the martial arts gym and all that. You're telling me you don't have no recordings of your son. You have you have eight kids who are black belts and you didn't take a recording of any of your sons and shout out to Willie Johnson if he did comment on our shit. Yeah, we don't know like, like this comment that we pulled up. It might not be a real. It's, it's him. Might not be it's real him. No, I, I'm willing to bet it's him because we looked him. We looked up the Twitter shit. We looked up. We messaged. I messaged the gym, and it seemed like the same dude was responding. We messaged the James Johnson's family's gym, and we said, "What's up with the MMA footage? Where it at?" <laughs> And their response was, we're on it. We're talking to promoters. Man, I, I don't oh, want to accuse them. They told you they were on it? Yeah. They were going to send you something? Yeah. Uh, that they, no, no, that they, were, they wanted to release it because when they said... Interesting. When they said they were reaching out to promoters, I said, what promotions did he find under... I would love... We would love to reach out to Wait, them. hold on. So there were promoters when he was fighting? Yeah. Apparently. So that's the promoters don't have footage on... That's Apparently what we're not. Saying. That's what we're they're, Look, we're just doing all this for research purposes. We're putting it on camera. And we're putting it out there for the people. It's all for the people to like so we can spread this message because <laughs> they're, they're spreading this thing that he like they just want us to believe it's like a Twitter story like a Twitter like conspiracy theory that he's this famous MMA fighter and then he's now he's an NBA player like all right cool where's the evidence and I'll tell you this he ain't the f- Willie Willie ain't the first one to threaten us with violence from the JJ house or well 
just from the JJ like camp period, but we've had <laughs> right, other people. Yeah, we had other people. We've other side. people threaten or say, "Oh, you should fight him or whatever." Or you guys would bitch up when you see fucking James Johnson, but <laughs> as <laughs> like no low so, key. Honestly, I seen him in person. I was just asking him like, "Hey, like, can I see some footage of you fighting for?" Me? <laughs> and if he gets triggered, like if he's like, "Nah, like fuck you, I want to beat you up," like I'll have to defend myself. Well, okay, so here's the right? other, here's the other thing. Okay, somebody else from JJ's household, apparently, they claimed it. It, it was pretty reputable. The dude who, who messaged oh, us yeah. and shit in, the, in Twitter, fucking, uh, he claim, he was claiming, basically, the only evidence he could provide was he was like, well, haven't you seen how quick uh, JJ's hands are on defense? I'm like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding, though. I didn't see I'm that. not even kidding, oh, yo. I did not see <laughs> That was the man's evidence. This was somebody from JJ's household telling me this. I'm not going to... We won't put this shit out, the D or the yeah, private we messages we or nothing. It, but yeah. one of the things he said was, he goes, I don't think our family is going to care about you guys talking about his martial arts past. He goes, I don't think JJ or our family is going to care about it. Well, he was wrong. If that's fucking... If that's uh, Willie Johnson, the real one, it, right. he was wrong about that. His family does care. Unless JJ this is Campus a fake Willie know. Johnson account. Whoever the one that commented on her video, that's what we were talking to. I mean... It might not even really be him. Pretty, might, I think it not. is. I think it is pretty damn right. accurate, bro, the shit that he was saying. He was talking about Cheyenne, Wyoming. It's like, brother, we out here in L.A. You think we're going to fly out to Cheyenne, Wyoming? <laughs> Never that. Come on. Never. Small town in the middle of nowhere? No, we're not doing that, bro. And it's like... But much respect to Willie Johnson. He's our senior. You know what I mean? We got much respect. For <laughs> hey, he was a no Marine question. He was a Marine. Marine. Yeah, I, so. I looked him up. He served 10 years. He was in Oki. He was in Korea. I would went through the same path. I served only, you know, four years or whatever. So shout out to Willie Johnson, man. Salute the trap for him. So he was, uh, he's one of our seniors. We're going to respect our elders, man. I'm not going to disrespect the man right. like that, okay? He <laughs> wants to fight us. We're not going to fight him, okay? Right. <laughs> we'll fight JJ, though, if you want to fly us out to Wyoming. <laughs> Jeff said he's down. <laughs> 50K. 50K, each of us, we'll all get around. We'll all get beat up. Yep. But it'll be oh, on camera. And they'll, man. They'll yeah, have we'll fighting camera. Evidence. Exactly. Then you'll say, here's your MMA footage right here. Or boxing. We're down he's to like, boxing. stop putting me in this. <laughs> Dude's trying to summon me like a Pokemon, Pokemon. right now. <laughs> Shout out to Pokemon. <laughs> that's all right, funny. Guys. All right, you guys. We'll, 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 that's all we had to say about James Dawson. Nice. We got we to gotta set the record straight. So people can stop harassing us. Yeah. Because Twitter's toxic. The comment section is toxic. All right. That's all we have to say about James Johnson. And then we'll get into the final topic of the day. So by the time this episode releases, it would be exactly one year since Kobe Bryant's passing. Honestly, I, this is what I'll say. Ever since his passing, that's when, like, literally everything went to, like, Shit, pretty much. Yeah, dude. That was the a world. tough time. I don't think I ever cared about a, a celebrity or a person I just didn't know like I did for Kobe. For Kobe. For sure. For sure. For sure. Like, I, I, like I, I never, member you know, yeah, like, absolutely. even if, like, I mean, like, you know, like, we've had very big celebrities pass away and stuff. Um, I never put much attention to it because it's like, you know, I don't know them. They don't know me. Right. don't matter. But well, when rich. Kobe died, it was different. It was different. Um, yeah, it was tough. And I can't believe it's already been a year. I mean, with all the crap that we've been through the past year, it's it's the tough time. And I remember, like, when he was going to retire, I was sad. Like, just oh just, yeah, right. just realizing that he wasn't going to play ball anymore, that made me sad. Like, even right. when, like, th that final game, he's like, you know, Mamba out. That's sad in itself. And just the fact that he, like, died, like, it's – crazy man it's crazy because i could look back at the last two times i cried as a human being it was when kobe passed away and kobe's last game wow yeah that's right. last i teared up i teared up on kobe's last game yeah like but, uh, i teared up but like it was more like joy like damn yeah, i got a yeah, chance yeah. to watch this guy Gross. and then when obviously when he passed away i was like damn i felt like i lost a family member it's crazy to think that i was like man it's not real like it was crazy the effect it had i just remember in the morning waking up to your guys's text messages and we want tacos and group and uh is that how you found out through the, through the yeah I th i'm pretty sure yeah it was well it was like 11 o'clock i think right yeah it was like 11 yeah, yeah so it's crazy i remember that like exact it's, it's like one of those moments where people ask you like damn do you remember where you were when that happened yeah. oh i'll always remember where i was at I, yeah. I was in my car I, I was on twitter and i followed tmz and they were the first one to break the news i was like what i was like that's not real and then you like literally right after i read it jeff sent it to the group 
the group text. He was like, yo, like, did you guys see this? And we're like, what the fuck? But I, I didn't read it through TMZ. I read it through, um, there's a famous Twitter account. Um, it's this guy who analyzes Laker games. His name's Lakers, Laker Film Room. Oh, yeah. Pretty yeah. big yeah. guy. Um, and this was before he worked for the Lakers. And he, he put like, oh, no. Like, dot, dot, yeah, dot. Yeah, and you send that to him. And I was like, like, what's he, what's he, like, he, he I, I like, you know, um, reading what he puts. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then I saw the Kobe thing. And I was like, what? Like, I was in my car uh, picking up my girlfriend. And I was just like, no, that's not true. Like, that's not true. And then, like, little by little, like, you realize it is. And it's right. just like, it was a crazy time, man. It was just a crazy, sad time. And, um. You know, it, it's I, I think James Worthy said this the best where he said, um, it's not something you get over. You just live with it. Right. You learn to live with it. And, and I think true. that's what's happened. So especially the way it affected not only like us individually, the whole city of L.A. and yeah. the whole world, it's the whole world. Bro. Bro. The whole yeah. world. But I think just witnessing the city change was a big thing, too. Like just going out to like we went all to the shit Memorial. downtown. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. all the downtown. pictures we got. I mean, I remember uh, driving by the uh, the 405 and there was like a big construction um and like these big um you know cranes or whatever and they had like the kobe jerseys out and that's when i was like man like this is the whole city yeah felt it, dude. yeah i'll for never sure. forget like even just the mood of the day i remember it was like a cloudy day oh it was a terrible yeah, mood cloudy, yeah, yeah like i remember i went to costco it was like quiet costco's like one of the yeah places. i mean yeah in public it was like everyone, everyone was knew what was going yeah, on was yeah like, Damn, what the hell? crazy man. and the thing is like it didn't hit me till like like the next day Cause it, like you oh, it hit me right home. away, bro. Really? It hit me right away. Because you know how it was right like, away. we didn't know, they didn't really know, like, throughout the day, they're like, oh. Once I saw NBA TV um, start saying, oh, Kobe Bryant passed, and they started talking about it. Right. That's when I was like, damn. Uh, nah, it is me, what it, it, like, like, it happened. I woke up the next day, and I was like, I took a shower, and I was like, looking at, like, the news, I was like, damn, it's still, like, it's still, like, the topic of the no, day. No, it was and crazy. Was like, it was just a crazy time, man. Yeah, and then once you found out that like his daughter was with them, I think oh, that's, like, that's yeah, I think that's like, probably yeah. like in all like fame, celebrity, sports people, music people, whatever. I, I think that's probably, if not the worst um, surprise, like death that yeah. happened. Like I don't, I don't know who. I mean, maybe Michael Jackson, but right. but he wasn't really our era, you know. I feel like older people like. But Michael, we were alive. I mean, we yeah, were here. Yeah. It's just I don't know, man. It's just it's, it's crazy. I never thought that happened. I'm just grateful I got a chance to see him like a handful of times. I saw him play. one game. I saw him one game right. against the Timberwolves in in uh, twenty uh, the 2015 season. Right. I, I saw ne- Kobe play. I never got to see him play the one game. I went to go see him was on New Year's Day. It was with you guys were there, oh, yeah, but he and he play didn't play. Yeah, he yeah. was injured. He was dealing with injuries. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like or no, he was resting. He was actually sitting out a lot of the home games so he could play. On the road because he was trying to play all of the road games. Correct. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it was last year. Yeah. 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 To finish the tour, was, so he yeah. was just like resting a lot of the home games, which unfortunate for that. I thought fans, that story was interesting about how Kobe uh, wanted to leave Nike and I, and start his own shoe brand, I and then like that. sign players to his brand where they'd have a lot more, you know, royalties and freedom about all that about the shoe or whatever. So that's crazy. Like hearing the stories of what he planned to do and it just never came to fruition. So right. it sucks, thing, man. That's really the one thing about it. Nike. What I think they should do with his shoes is that they shouldn't short release it and have people like, like scalpers and then people resell them. Cause I feel like Kobe was that one, like Jordan was more like a street shoe, but Kobe's like, he made them specifically for you guys to play. Right. Yeah. yeah play basketball. So I feel like, and I think Vanessa Bryant did that with the Grinches that came out, the, the Christmas day shoes. Okay. Like, I think she got in contact with Nike, and she was telling him, like, yo, like, like get, like, let people have access to this shoe. Yeah. Because that's what Kobe was about. He was more, like, like, like Jordan's, I guess, they're stylish shoes, but his are more technical. Like, hey, go play in them. He was always, like, teaching kids to play. Yeah. So, I hope that's what Nike does. I think they, they should never short show his shoes. Yeah. Keep them affordable for people to yeah, like, yeah. keep wearing them. Right. Even I, like, I, I can't wait till um they put a statue up. In front right, of Staples. Sure. I think they were supposed to do it this year. They're, they, I think they do it after you're in the Hall of Fame. Um, mm. Oh, okay. Because this is the year he gets inducted. Yeah. Oh, really? I think yeah. they did the same Damn. thing with Shaq. Um, we were there when they had so He retired at 16? So five years it takes? Four years, but because of COVID and stuff. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And it's, like, arguably the best, like, 
like a uh, Hall of Fame class. Cause they damn, better Tim give Duncan statues KJ. out like that Shaq one. Yeah, for sure. They those will call, be priceless. Man, that's yeah. gonna be crazy. I hope so. But here in LA, that should be crazy. I know. I uh, dude, I low key should have brought it, but like I got a chance. To, like the day he announced his retirement, me and Axel and his brother got a chance to go to the game. I remember he. I remember we were already planning to go to the game. Remember I hit you up. I was like, yo, Jeff, you want to go to the game? Cause the Paul George game? Yeah, that's when we yeah. used to be Paul George fans. I said no. He was like, no. Nah. I said no. Yeah. And Dave said yes. Guy. He wanted to go see Paul George play. Yeah, because I was <laughs> yeah. actually a, he was actually my like second favorite player behind Kobe once that's upon funny. a time. I remember I, he had a shirt or some shit. Yeah, and I, I donated it. <clears throat> but yeah, I told Axel, I was like, fuck it, let's just go. I remember ticket that's when tickets were affordable. We sat nosebleeds, <laughs> we got there and they gave us this Kobe letter. That's that was the day he announced retirement. That was the day he announced yeah. his retirement. We got our tickets. We got a chance to go to the game. I still have it. I have, well, we have two. We have one that we opened and we framed it in our room so you can read what he said, like, in the letter. Okay. And I have one that's never been touched, never been opened. I think that's, like, the most valuable thing I ever got, like, involving Kobe. Oh, I see these two jerseys, too. I got these in his last season. There was two games where they gave out his number eight and then his number 24. So these were actually from the games. I need to frame them up. What's a Kobe game you'll never forget? Uh, when I got that twenty four jersey because I was live at a game. Was that that thirty point game? He had thirty. Was like, his, yeah, he had thirty. That was like the because every Kobe game he like, damn, I actually have two in mind. All right, I'll tell you about this game. This game he had thirty eight. It was against the Timberwolves. And I remember because Andrew Wiggins did like a fadeaway, and then Kobe's like, "Hey, where'd you like? Where'd you learn that move?" He's like, "Oh, I got that." From <laughs> yeah, you. yeah but funny. that was like that game was like a signature Kobe moment. It was like. We were down. Kobe yeah. got his back in the game. He took over and he hit like a game, not like a buzzer beater, but a game winning shot to yeah. close out the game. And I was like, damn, I got to win this like Kobe do, like yeah. Kobe does. Right. Yeah, yeah. That was like the first time I got to see it. And then another one, me and Axel actually went to this game. He had a triple double against the Raptors. And I remember me and Axel were watching this. And I'm like, yo, Kobe's hooping. That's, like, I hope it goes overtime. That's one game. Uh, I don't know. I think it was the season before he tore his Achilles, or oh, or where? the season when he tore his Achilles. Those, like three clutch shots. Is that what you're yeah talking about? against yeah. Toronto? And he hit those cr- like they were surviving to make the playoffs, and yep. he hit those like clutch three pointers. Mm-hmm. That's a, a a game on TV, I guess that I'll never forget. Yeah, like, I remember I was with uh, Dopey that day. We were just watching. We were crazy. just eating pizza, watching it. Crazy. Yeah, I think for me was when he stood up on that table at, after he beat the champ or after he beat the no after he beat the uh, Celtics the, the second Celtics time and he was like doing like this thing like to the crowd and she was like screaming at the crowd like yeah. fuck dude I was I was I remember I remember watching one. the finals I was kind of younger though uh-huh. but I vividly remember that that Toronto <laughs> game and then of course when I saw him in person against uh, the Timberwolves so it's just like yeah I could never forget those moments yeah. I don't know did you ever see that one there was one move. Because me and Axel went to a game, and it's, like, one of, like, Kobe's, like, signature highlights. It was They were playing against the Raptors, and this was not his last season, but the year before his last season, where Terrence Ross was guarding him, and he was, like, fouling the hell out of him, and Kobe just stops, and he stares at the coach. And then he's, like, uh, and then he just that. crosses him up. Oh, oh that's okay. funny. Let's, let's look that up. Axel has I don't remember Axel. that. But, yeah, Kobe, like, he was, like, posting up, and then Terrence Ross was just fouling him. And he just stops, like he literally just stops. He stares at the coach, and he's like, "All right, they're still like they didn't call nothing." And he just goes, he crosses him up, he breaks his ankles, and he hits like a shot. And that I was like the highlight that. of the game. Uh, Axel says he has it on his thing. Let me pull it up. Oh shit! Hold on. No, it's a different. One. But it's the same game. Let me. I'll pull it up on YouTube real quick. Damn, pre-COVID, the yeah, good old days. And he jabs him. Breaks them. Signature. Signature. <laughs> I remember, uh, for some reason, I remember this clear, and he just, like, he just looks at the ref. Like, Yo, what the <laughs> fuck? Jeremy like, Lin was on that team. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm sad that Zach never got a chance to see him. I know, dude. That's, that's crazy, Zach. I thought you see, I thought you guys well, seen him. I guess low key, you were serving the country, so I respect yeah, I you for that. Yeah, he was I, being that stationed. Was, I was here on leave the time we went to that Sixers game, so I was here for, like, He did go to a, a Charlotte Hornets game, though. I've been to a handful. I've been to like that's fucking bought, five bought some of Hornets those gear. <laughs> yeah. How come you never got like a co- like a Lakers versus Hornets game though? They probably uh, no. Nah, it was just timing. It was like they only the Lakers only go to uh, Charlotte a once a year. Yeah. Once yeah. a year. Oh yeah, once a year. Then so it's up. like yeah, it was that was hard. We pretty much only went to games that was like on a Friday or Saturday or yeah. some shit like there that. There you go. Basically. Right. Right. 
it's not fucking playing, but yeah. All right, last words. I'll just say, uh, you know, I was just I was happy that we got a chance to see Kobe play. That he was for LA. And yeah. God rest his soul. God rest his R. soul. R.I.P. Kobe. R.I.P. Kobe. You know, he's inspired us, everyone around the world. So I guess we'll close it out on that. I'm not good with words. Yes, sir. But damn, I still get sad thinking about Kobe. So yeah. All right, you guys. Well, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Shots Taken. If you're watching this, make sure to like and subscribe. If you're listening to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts, wherever you're listening from, make sure to follow. Hit the downloads so you guys can listen to any time of the day. Rest in peace, Kobe. Rest in peace, Gigi. Rest in peace, everyone on the helicopter. Thank you, guys. Until next time, peace.